Oceanside Conservation Trust held its annual meeting on Little Diamond Island recently and honored Cyrus and Patty Hagee for land they donated. Roger Burley was there and has this report. Hello, uh, my name is Roger Burley and I am standing on the front porch of the casino which is on Little Diamond Island uh, facing out towards Peaks Island uh, and House Island in Casco Bay. The first stop on the ferry line, Casco Bay Lines ferry trip down the bay. And the occasion today is the Oceanside Conservation Trust 2012 annual meeting. And we had some 60 people here this afternoon, not only to, uh, to hear about what Oceanside Conservation Trust is currently up to, but also to see a very special, special piece of property that's been donated uh, by Cyrus Hagee. So I am now standing with Priscilla Doucette, who is a Little Diamond Islander, and she and Harry Pringle, another Little Diamond Islander, uh, set up this annual meeting, uh, 2012 Oceanside Annual Meeting, here on Little Diamond. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you think this uh, donation of property by, from Cyrus uh, means to your island. I think that it's the most incredible thing that's happened to Little Diamond. Um, we dreamt of it, we felt that uh, we wished it would happen, we saw what could happen when part of those lots were developed um, about 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, and now, you know, that's did not, though, fortunately, take up the entire uh, half of the island. So we were fortunate that a lot of land was not developed at that time, um, just for economic reasons. And, that the islanders worked very hard to keep that development to a smaller scale. Now, um, we don't have to worry anymore. I'm standing here uh, on these two special parcels that we're here to celebrate on Little Diamond Island, and I'm here with uh, Patty and Cyrus Hagee, and uh, I would like to have a couple of words on what impelled you to do this. Patty, you first. Uh, I like Little Diamond Island when it's wild, and it, this part of the island has always been wild, and we really want to see it stay that way. And you, Cyrus? I just saw an opportunity where I could mix a little bit of capitalism along with some conservationism, <laughs> and we were able to protect some land by selling a few pieces, and at the end, I think we hit a home run. Preserving land is something we've always looked at when I was on the planning board. Anytime we have a developer come forward, we would try to nudge them to protect some land. Mm -hmm. And I think it's totally appropriate for, in a small development, that a piece of, piece of the property be set aside and protected. And in this case, it worked out perfect. We were able to create 300 feet of shore frontage, set it aside, and then add, we'll be over the years, be able to add more land to it till, you know, we probably have about 10, 15 acres protected. People who live here on this land that, uh, appreciate it. We've got some blue herring that are nesting yeah. up top. We've yeah, got I think there's blue herring nesting right in this lot, actually, because we've we been have, hearing their we, funny squawks. We have the osprey, we have uh, the, what was the bird we just spot, heard the other yeah, it's day? It's like a brown thrasher or a something A brown like thrasher. So you have a lot of wildlife. We actually have mink on the island now, so Deer. we're protecting habitat, mm -hmm. you know, for those animals. But it's nice to see the, 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 the blue herring, yeah. herring coming back because yeah, uh, they had left the island for a number of years. Yeah. Well, the other thing that's nice about it too now is an organization like Ripple Effect and Cow Island can bring their kids over here mm -hmm. and they have a place of public access on the island and gives them a chance to come over and experience it. And we have a geocache on the island right now for them to oh, really? experiment, to find. And, and so, you know, it's, it creates a lot of opportunities for everybody. So it's interactive. It's not just going to sit here with a no trespassing sign. It's going to essentially invite people to come in by its openness. Yes. Well, we're going to be working with the landowner on both sides to create a trail network through here, a uh, poison ivy free trail network, mm -hmm. that is. And uh, it's, it's, it's some great opportunities. But at, at the end of the day, it's a piece of land that will just get to grow old and older and older and mature. And hopefully we can be good stewards of it and make it be attractive for generations to come.